guys, welcome to Better Bachelor. My name is Joker, and today we're going to be talking about uh, the dark side of living and dating in an instant gratification world. I've mentioned this in a couple of older videos about everybody treats dating like it's fast food now. Everybody actually treats everything like it's fast food now. So uh, I wanted to talk about this a bit um, and why I think, again, it's important that men are happy on their own, doing their own thing and they don't worry about the dating world, or if they do, they keep things, even if you don't keep things short term, keep keep your emotions uh, distant. You know, I, I don't think it is now a good time to fall head over heels in love with a woman because um, more than likely after about three months to a year, at least according to science, uh, they're gonna get bored of you. And this is known as the honeymoon phase or the butterflies or the tingles. And I've, I've talked about that a bit before, but now I have some articles from some women that are actually, well, them explaining that, uh, yeah, I'm right, three months to a year, and that's about it. And Or all my relationships end after three months, and I don't know why. It's, it's because they, they get bored of it. Uh, first, let's go through our losses. Um, I am going to leave down, uh, actually, let, let me give you a bus update. I am going to leave chapter links down below. So if you want to skip over this, just look down below. You can jump to the chapter that you want to go to. All right, quick update. Um one of the things that I was going to do a video about, but and, and I may still at some point, is knowing when to say when in a relationship. Uh, knowing when to quit. Know when to walk away. Even if she girl doesn't cheat on you, or for you ladies, if a guy doesn't cheat on you. But even if your, your, your significant other doesn't cheat on you or doesn't leave you or... Uh, and you're still in the relationship. There's a point in time where uh, the juice isn't worth the squeeze, as we say, and the the effort that you're putting into it versus what you're getting out uh, out of it isn't worth it. And I may explore that in a video, but I can tell you this: my relationship with my beautiful bus is very one-sided. Um, when my bus is sitting still, it is a perfect little cabin, a great home. I'm fully uh, self-sufficient. Um, I, I traveled for almost a month, and by using uh, water bottles that I can, or water jugs that I can buy out of a store to drink, and by, by just sprinkling myself with enough water to get wet, sudsing up, rinsing off, um, I was able to make my, my 50 gallon water tank uh, last a month and I only used about 25% of the water. That means I could probably get away with two or three months off the grid. I've got my wood stove over here. The only thing I'm really missing is an air conditioner, which is why I headed north. So right now I'm in Wyoming. Um, it's uh, just outside of Casper. It's, it's a beautiful area. Um, a lot of nothing, and then there's Casper Mountain, which is really beautiful, and then kind of a lot more nothing. Um, I, I picked a few places uh, on the way here as well as here to look at a few uh, land, pieces of land, some that had like a garage or little pieces of property um, or uh, property. Let me try, try that again. H homes or buildings built on the property. Um, the prices have just gone insane and everything that I'm selecting to look at, um, I, I picked out four to look at two days ago and then I drove here from, um, I went through Kansas, then Nebraska and, and just past Denver and then up into Wyoming. I got here and in three days, the four pieces of property that I chose to look at are all sale pending. They're, they're being sold quickly and anywhere from five to 10 acres in that range. I mean, if you buy it way out in the middle of grassland or desert, I can find them for a hundred grand. But anything near town or anything that's got trees on it, mature trees on it, or in a slightly wooded area, uh, or half the land, it might be five acres, but three acres is a very steep ravine that you can't live on. Uh, it's unusable or it's expensive as all get out. Like there are areas where three, four acres is going for 150, 180 grand. So I'm looking all over the place. <clears throat> and, uh, as it stands now, this, this search may take a lot longer than I thought. Well, the bus transmission is having problems again. It's something where the sensor keeps going wrong. I talked to a mechanic. I told him about, because some of you guys mentioned, make sure it's grounded out. I, we've gone over everything. And this was an Allison transmission expert. Um, but, I, I mean, he knew what he was talking about. But some, there's a gremlin in the machine that people can't find. And so my bus keeps getting stuck in fourth gear. It's not overdrive so I can't go 65 miles an hour the fastest the bus will go is about 50 miles an hour but it won't leave fourth gear so when I'm accelerating it takes me about a week and a half to get to 50 miles an hour and then going down the highway at 50 miles an hour I, I did 
780 miles in two days to get here. It's painful. I mean, it's just creeping along and you're, you you got to pull over sometimes and wave people past. Um, but so when the bus is stopped, it's perfect. And when it's moving, it's an absolute nightmare. I've already put in uh, about $3,000 into the transmission. I could have basically bought a new one at this point, but they keep, uh, they've dropped the pan. They've looked inside. They said, it's a new transmission. Everything is good on the inside. And so it, it it's got to be something that leads up to the transmission. I know a lot of you guys will be like, oh, just follow this or look at this YouTuber. Um, the, these guys that I'm talking to, one guy's worked on buses literally for 20 years. And I've, I've explained what's going on. He supposedly fixed it. And yet here I am. And the thing is, I'm 700 miles away from the guy that supposedly fixed it last time. So I can't loop back around and go back to him and say, hey. Um, so I have disputed the, 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 the cards. I've called them. I've said, hey, you didn't fix it. I've gotten a portion of my money back. But I'm, I'm, I'm to the point now where, look, this bus only costs, like, uh, I think with tax title and everything came around 6,500 bucks, six grand. Um, my materials in it are, I don't know, three or four grand. And then my solar is about five or six grand. Uh, so all combined, yeah, I'm in for probably 15 grand. But if I steal the solar out of here, um, I'm back down to like nine grand. So I'm already in. Uh, a third of what the bus cost me. And I just cannot put any more money into this bus. So I'm going to try to limp it. They do have some storage areas here that I can pay 50 bucks a month and just tuck it in there. I can probably rent a little or uh, buy a little trailer. Um, I don't know if I'm going to get like a camper camper that I can get used or something because that's very expensive. It's about 20 grand. Or if I can just get a little trailer that I can stuff everything in and then stay in hotels. And until I find a place I, I like I want to live and then I can say, OK, this is where I got to bring the bus and just see if I can get the bus straight there, park it on the land and call it a day. So I may have to do my running around in just my truck. That's where I am at the moment. I don't think I'm leaving town with this darn bus, um, which means I'll be my videos will be coming from my truck or from a park bench or from an inside a little trailer if I buy that. I don't know what I'm gonna do. Um, my video quality is gonna suffer and that that really b bugs me, um, but there's nothing I can do about it. I'll still be able to edit them. I, I bought a little generator so I can still charge my laptop and run it and then turn the generator off while I record so you don't hear the generator running in the background. I'll do what I can to keep my video quality up for you guys. As you can see, I look a little tired because I lost a lot of sleep last night trying to think about what I'm gonna do. A uh, quick uh, uh, thank you, a quick thank you for Locals, <clears throat> my, my Locals, betterbachelor.locals.com. Many of you are joining over there for the cup, basically for the price of a good cup of coffee, well, basically for a good cup of coffee at a restaurant or something like that. For five bucks, you can go over there and support me. You guys that are over there are what's keeping me alive. I mean, you guys that watch here obviously are doing me a great favor, but I'm not putting out the number of videos I normally do. And because of that, you know, I don't get ad revenue. And, and of course, my, my income drops off. Those of you that are saying, hey, you know what, dude, I know you're traveling and here's a little bit of support and here's five bucks a month or, or 50 for the for the one year, you get a couple months off. Um, you guys right now are my, my lifeblood because that still helps me even when I'm not publishing as many videos as I normally do. So if you, if you want to keep supporting me on the road until I can find a, a happy home and, and hopefully build a nice little getaway for us guys, um, you can join me over on betterbachelor.locals.com. Support me over there. Thank you very much for those of you that have. And for those of you that are just like, nah, dude, I'm not going to support you there, but I, I will keep watching your videos when you put them up. Thanks, that counts too. All right, so let's let's move, get into the main the main losses of the day here. Uh, first, so this guy posts, uh, this is from Bruh, Bruh Moments on Twitter, which is funny because they link guys being, being idiots. I want you to listen to this guy explain why he lets his girlfriend sleep with whoever she wants, and yet he doesn't, and, and he wants to say that he's not a cock. Sorry, like, but that's not how this works. So let me rewind this here. And I'm just going to play it through so you guys can hear it. So I choose to allow my girlfriend to sleep with other men. That doesn't give you the right to call me a cuck. And this is a message for all the people out there using that hateful language. Why don't you try going a day in my shoes where you are with someone you love very much and you want them to be able to express themselves physically and spiritually in a way that perhaps they can't do with just you. Now, personally, I would never sleep with another woman. I love my girlfriend very much, but I know that her needs 
require her to have the right to explore that territory. And if it means I have to sleep on the sofa a few days a week, then, you know, so be it. Ultimately, our relationship means more to me than, you know, my ego or my jealousy. So think about what you're saying when you use that word. All right, well, I'll think about what we're saying when we use that word, and you, sir, are a cuck. You just are. Um, This guy gives up his bed for his girlfriend to sleep with another dude in his bed while he takes the couch. And he says, well, I'm not going to go out and get another girl because I love her, and I don't need to express that in any other way, but she can do what she wants. This, guys, is, is where I think half of men are going right now. I swear half of men are going in this direction where they feel lucky to have a girl and so they'll do whatever it takes for her to be happy. And if that means she has multiple partners and wants to bring other men into his bed that he shares with her and he has to sleep on the couch, this is half of men. And some women are going to be very excited about this because they say, hey, I got a weak dude that that pays half the rent or pays all the rent where we live. And he pays for my stuff and he takes me out on dates and he buys me dinner. And yeah, I'll throw him a bone every once in a while or I let him throw me a bone every once in a while. Um, But he's just going to he's just going to take it. Then she gets to bring in. um, I, I think the community calls them bulls, which is just these guys that come in. They ram her. They fold her up like laundry and uh, rearrange her insides, and then they hit the streets, and they are probably the the handsome, attractive, tall, dark, handsome uh, guys that all the women want to share. So he comes in, plows her good, and then leaves, and then she gets a a beta bucks provider here to take care of her. This is where half the guys are going. I think the other half, and you'll see in the other uh, uh, posts that I read from, the other half are going the other way, which is like, you know what, F you. I don't need you. I don't want you. You are... Uh, and expendable you are the one that's expendable and and uh, you know this is not a great place for society to be i don't think uh ultimately i don't think women are going to be happy with either being um where they they have to either choose from uh you know alpha strong male and they need to be kind of the the quiet one or this where the woman has to wear the pants like there is very little gray in between if we keep going in this direction um you'll see the the post that i have here this girl named chris on uh, uh Uh, Twitter. She posts, posts, eat off his place, plate, excuse me, eat off his plate on the first date to establish dominance. And she gets 136 grand likes, uh, 136,000 likes. That is her saying, oh, well, you better show your dominance over your man. Now, the guy that uh, responds to her named Tay says, leave her with the bill to establish consequences. And I like that. But, you know, that only got 5,000 likes versus her 136. Women are going to need to understand that now if you eat off the cuck's plate, the guy that a video that I just showed, if you eat off his plate, you can establish dominance over him and he'll be happy that you do so. You do that with a a, a kind of a strong, independent and intelligent man. And he's going to be like, no, no, not we're we're not playing that. Same thing with this one. This Allison uh, Reichel says, maybe if you guys hold H-O-D-L, hold, uh, like the crypto, if you guys hold women like you hold your coins, you would have girlfriends by now. And the guy below says the coins increase in value, though. Um, yeah, here's the point. She's, again, chasing after that five, top 5 or 10% of men. They're just cycling through women. That's all they're doing, and they're happy to do so. So she's like, well, no man holds on to me. Not no man. Only those top 10 percenters don't hold on to you. They pump and dump and then they go find somebody else. There's 90% of men that are invisible to her. This guy's like, look, we know what you're doing and you don't increase enough in value for us to hold on to anymore. I mean, that's that's really kind of where society is going. I mean, it just is what it is. And I'm okay with that. Look, I'm, I'm you know, a, a, uh, I think I heard this on a Joe Rogan podcast where, you know, a molecule of water that's caught in a river and is going to go over a waterfall, that one molecule cannot stand up to all the other molecules and go, everybody stop, we're going to go over a waterfall. It's just kind of along for the ride. And even though there's a lot of us guys on content like this and and on the interwebs uh, that are saying, hey, we're not participating anymore, the main mass majority of men are still participating. And so society is going to go right off the edge of that waterfall. The best we can do is move to the edge of the waterfall and... If we don't go over that way, we can just stay in a little side pool off to the side of it and try to watch everybody else go over because 
uh, women are, are bringing a lot of pain on themselves and they still want to point the fingers and blame patriarchy society men um whatever without stopping and pausing we're just reacting to what they are doing and until they understand that <clears throat> we got a lot of problems ahead of us um and this is the the uh, quote from kierkegaard that i wanted to read and i think this is kind of relating to what i'm talking about society kind of going off the waterfall it says a fire broke out backstage in a theater the clown came out to warn the public uh, they thought it was a joke and applauded he repeated it the acclaim was even greater i think that's just how the world will come to an end to general applause from wits who believe it's a joke that's how people are laughing about all oh, you strong girls and you know making memes on on twitter and making fun of guys and, and all this other stuff is women are just applauding it and they're just having a great old time with it and patriarchy bet well look if we end up uh, getting in a conflict with um the ccp if we end up getting into those rough times where finances are bad or people can't afford everything or inflation which is a tax on everybody but the rich because the rich can put their money into properties and other things that go up in value if uh, if inflation keeps going up and which makes your savings virtually um, basically worth less, that's kind of a general tax on everybody. They say we're up five percent on the year. I think that's BS because if you look at lumber and metal and steel and all these different things, we're looking in some markets between twenty and sixty percent. So as as inflation goes up, times are going to get tougher, and eventually the middle management, the floofy journal jobs, all this other crap is going to go away. And what's not going to go away is the guys that work on things, the guys that produce, the the diesel mechanics, the engineers, the 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 carpenters, plumbers, repairmen, things like that. So, uh, you know, they're they're all clapping and cheering as society goes over the cliff, and we're trying to warn them, and they don't listen. All right, let's move on to our main story now. Uh, the instant gratification, how Tinder almost ruined dating for millennials. I'm going to correct this headline. Uh, this is written by Jezebel and Kat, and I don't know which one wrote it. Uh, instead of instant gratification, how Tinder almost ruined dating for millennials, I think this should be named this. Instant gratification, how uh, Tinder and online dating, or just s social media, did ruin dating for everyone. I'm just going to put that there. Because even women that are my age, in their 50s, and their, I mean, women of all ages, and men, are jumping on these online... Uh, dating apps and it's just picture and that's all they're going by is the pictures unless you're standing there with a, maybe a Bentley behind you and uh, holding a bag of cash then you might have a shot so it says have you ever asked your parents or better yet your grandparents how they met chances are it did not go something like this well I saw a photo of your pops on a dating app and I thought he looked DTF or down to F so I swiped right and he swiped right and we met up at a bar got fall down drunk and went back to his share house where we had disappoint, disappointing try to be quiet sex while trying to remember each other's names. Now, I have to assume the reason why she can phrase it like that is because that's what the author has probably done at some point. I know a lot of women and guys that have. She says, I'm the first to admit that Tinder and similar dating apps are excellent for that quick, easy, and mostly drama-free style of interaction. It is the perfect fit for our generation. We are a generation who grew up with the world at our fingertips and a smartphone placed in our hands as quickly as possible. Since we were born, we've been taught to strive for more, better grades, better university offers, better jobs, more money, better cars, thinner waistlines. Well, I think you're failing on that last one. There's a reason that we are the generation who coined the phrase FOMO, or fear of missing out, and YOLO, you only live once. We are constantly competing to have the most and the best, while also being hyper aware that our youth will fade and there's no time like the present. Why wait for tomorrow? It's only natural that we date the way we live the rest of our lives, fast, easy, and as much as possible. That's how dating is going, fast and easy. Oh, I met a great guy, or I met a great girl. She's awesome. We jumped into bed together. We had a lot of fun. Um, and one to three months later, or in some cases even shorter than that, I'm bored moving on. Or uh, they did this one thing that I didn't like. I had a study I was going to read, but I decided not to because this video is going to be pretty long without it already. Where well, they were talking about like how people are leaving jobs because they get a promotion and they're not able to get another promotion and another raise within three to six months. These are millennials. 
And the reason that they're doing that is because they say, well, I, it ta it's taking too long for me to climb the ladder. Now, those of you that are older, like me, I, there's been places I've worked for four or five years to get a raise, or other than, you know, cost of living, three to five percent sometimes. Um, there's been jobs I've had where I never got a promotion, even though I felt I worked really hard and did really well. But now we're in the society where it's, again, instant gratification, uh, pay attention to me, I think I'm better than everybody else. And now they're, they're going into workplaces and when they're told, oh, you can't use your personal cell phone while you're working, I don't want the job. Because they can't get away from their damn phones for very long. Or when they don't get that promotion or they don't get that attention um, with uh, a raise or something like that, they say, you know what, I, 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 this isn't the place for me. This is the retention problem in, in corporations is really becoming a thing. I, I've got a friend of mine that works at Cisco Systems up in Raleigh RTP, and he said, man, we can't keep any of these young people around. They just bail. They say, but we are also aware, uh, we are also the generation who have been taught to continually question. I'm starting to realize that long-term healthy relationships take time, require nurturing, and yes, they do require us to leave all the you all <laughs> they require us to leave the all-you-can-eat buffet of choices that exist on our Tinder accounts. I have recently started dating, and by dating, I don't mean a few drunken bar crawls, awkward morning walk of shames, and then slowly ghosting when you're bored of the eight conversation you've had about their favorite pizza topping in two weeks. I mean dating. I mean dinner reservations, kisses on the cheeks, a few glasses of wine, driving home alone. I've recently met a man who shares shatters the concept I used to hold of what dating meant. I'm going to read this quickly, but I find it interesting because here is a guy that slowed things down and she thought it wasn't working out. In other words, he dated kind of like a traditional guy would, which is what I did in Younger, which is the three-day rule and taking your time. And she thought there was a problem. That's how, how much the, the quick hookup culture happens on date one or two. I got a truck outside, uh, I guess, bleeding his air brakes, so you're going to hear hisses and I'm, I'm at a, all the RV parks around here are filled up, so I'm at another truck stop. She says, after the first date, two beers over dinner, local pub, pub, he gave me a kiss on the cheek, called me a cab. He texted me when I got home to thank me for a wonderful light, night. I was a little confused as to why, if he had such a good time, I was in bed alone. So on first date, she's surprised they didn't sleep together. But she said, I thought maybe he's old fashioned. And she said, then I didn't hear from him for three days. The three-day rule is a thing. She said, I almost actually canceled the second date because I, because I had a busy day and I was tired. Uh, but she goes on to say, when on the second date, he, um, she said I, uh, she was wearing un incredibly uncomfortable but sexy lingerie. So she dressed for the bedroom and she was wearing it while they went out to dinner. She said, imagine my complete shock when he gre greeted me with a kiss on the cheek, led me to a beautiful restaurant where we had a reservation. We sat, we talked, we laughed. He kissed her in the cheek, put her in a cab, sent her home. She said, uh, I thought it was going so well. I must not be his type. She was disappointed. She didn't get lucky again. My male friend shook their heads in sympathy and told me I might just have been friend zoned. My girlfriend assumed he might be gay. I was so confused. So again, here, because a guy didn't instantly zip and try to get into her pants, she thought it's not going well. And then on the third date, they talked and they got to know each other. And she said, oh, this is becoming like, oh, now I understand. It's better to actually like and know and get interested in the guy that you are dating before sleeping with him. She said, I went home and deleted Tinder. How depressing, uh, blah, blah, blah. But anyway, she's like, oh, this is wonderful. I've now found out what dating is like. Now, what are the odds? She, she meets Chad McThunder schlong and decides, hey, you know what? Yeah, I, I want to sleep. And he sleeps with her in the first night. She goes right back to the way she did it forever. Because, you know, this guy's tucking her in a cab and giving her a kiss on the cheek, not even the lips, for the first three dates. He's way too old-fashioned for a girl like this, and she's going to be bouncing on him. Why? Because of the instant gratification generation, and that's where we are. And uh, this is from Elite Daily. Uh, this is when most new couples leave the honeymoon phase, according to the experts. <clears throat> Ah, the honeymoon phase, a time when you've just fallen in love with someone new and life seems like it couldn't get better. Your new bae can do no wrong and you feel like the luckiest person in the world. But of course, if past relationships have taught us anything, it's that sooner or later, reality is bound to come charging in, shattering our rose-colored glasses. If, you've, if you're ever seeing someone new and wondering when is the honeymoon phase over, the short answer is that it totally varies from relationship to relationship. Some relationships burn super bright only to cool down that much quicker, while others build slowly and manage to sustain the passion for a bit longer. 
Not forever, not for a lot longer, a bit longer. Again, this is the butterfly phase. This is the excitement. This is uh, chasing Chad. You know, these are all the giddy moments that women are like, oh, this must mean he really likes me and I really like him. And you're sleeping with each other constantly. And it's great fun. And then when the guy gets another option, because again, they're only being with the top 10% of men. When the guy gets another option, he bails and they're heartbroken. Or she might have to work on something about herself or might have to communicate with the guy because something's not perfect anymore. And they say, you know what? Instead of working on what I already have, I'm going to go chase butterflies with somebody new because that's exciting and I don't feel that excitement anymore and, and I want to go do that. And that's and that's where we are. The, the fast food, the, the pull up, order it, swipe it, get it, sleep with it, use it, until it's not exciting anymore, throw it away in the garbage and then go back through the drive-in. That's where we are. So those of you guys that says, oh, you know, I just want to find the right one girl and get married and have kids and have a family and a house on a hill. Look, I'm not saying it won't or can't happen for you. But again, this I mean, this article is written by a Taya Sunsi um, or Sun, uh, Sun Sanusi, uh, Taya Sanusi. Um, here's another girl that's like, hey, three months, man, and I'm pretty much done. She says, uh, transitioning out of the honeymoon phase of any relationship can be a bit troubling at first, and it's easy to get be left feeling very confused. In the beginning, you could barely manage to be in their presence for five minutes without rip ripping each other's clothes off, but now you're only having sex every other time you see each other. Oh, no. Now ask a married guy, and he's like, every other time you see each other is still a good deal. I see my wife seven days a week, and sometimes it's three weeks before my I get my fun time. Uh, so every other time still not bad for a lot of dudes says all of a sudden the drive to be agreeable and chill has just been replaced with a sense of annoyance when things don't work out how you would like them to. While this is dampening all the initial excitement, can feel like a bit of a bummer. The truth is that it's completely normal part of every relationship. Uh, Elite Daily spoke with relationship expert Monica Parikh of uh, School of Love, New York City. Oh, that sounds very official. And dating coach Damona Hoffman to find out while it's normal for things to start cooling off. Yes, it's normal for things to start cooling off. What's not normal is you to, to use that as the moment to bail and go look for something new. That this, this is what's the problem. Because the moment, you know, a lot of guys are like, hey, you know what? I like her. She's fun to hang out with. She's cute. She's pretty. Guys very rarely feel the butterflies. Or if they do, our butterflies are significantly more south. And and that's the excitement that we want to feel. We don't get the fluttering hard and oh giddy excitement. It's just kind of like yeah, I like her. She's cool to hang out with. I like sleeping with her. It's it's like I like her. I dig her. I want to keep her around. But the woman loses the butterflies and she bounces. In the meantime, the guy's like, well, we were sleeping together and we were hanging out and having fun. So I was good. Again, we go to the divorce rates. Seventy to eighty percent of the divorce rates are women because they're like, I'm bored. He's not doing it for me anymore. So they say three months is the average. Um, and I'm not going to read the details of this, but three months is the average. Dur and they say during the honeymoon phase, everyone is on their best behavior and a bit fraudulent. For example, you may pretend to love his mother, although she keeps shooting you the evil eye. Me meanwhile, he pretends to love yoga and kale and apple smoothies. Yeah, these guys are going to lie, and, and uh, especially the player guys. They may not outright lie, but they're going to be agreeable and they're going to do what they can to keep sleeping with a woman. And then when they get bored of her, they're like, OK, I'm done with you. And they bounce. Now, the woman may have been like, oh, he's my dream catch. So this works both ways. I mean, there's women out there that are upset that the that guys are just bailing after three months. But the thing is, again, if they're chasing Chad and he gets a lot of other options, he's only with her just for the short term. And if you didn't watch my hour long video I did on the other day, I talk about the biology of this. Men that are looking for short term hookups specifically are attracted to women's bodies, not their face. So if she has a nice body, but her face is kind of average. Doesn't matter. That guy, all he's looking at is what he's going to be sleeping with. And he will tap it. And he'll tap it until he gets bored of that one or finds a prettier face or a different body. And then this short term guy is going to move off to her, leaving the unattractive or less than or average looking woman or whatever whatever's maybe down a peg or two on the uh attractive scale of visually in society he's gonna leave and she's gonna be like oh my prince charming he was so good looking and fun and cool and interesting and and he but he left me men are losers and in the meantime guys like yeah she had a nice body butter face you know because she what her face wasn't that beautiful so i'm gonna move over to this one 
because it's new and it's interesting. So women gets her hearts broken, all men are a-holes, and the guy moves on. And again, the woman saying all men are a-holes are only looking at the top 10%. So guys are doing this too, but this is a reaction because the guys are able to sleep with the women, women very quickly. They don't have to promise commitment. They don't have to promise relationship. They don't have to take her out to quality dates. They don't have to invest in her. The women are like, you're hot, sleep with me. Guy's like, okay, not a problem. I'm going to do that. Whose fault is that? Women. Women are the gatekeepers to the bedroom. Men are the gatekeepers to the relationship. So he's getting what he wants without having to give the commitment. He gets what he wants, but she's not getting what ultimately she wants. Now, if that woman said, hey, I want a relationship. I want long term. I want you to love me first. And the guy went, no, I am I'm not into that. I'm just short term Johnny. She would not be sleeping with him. And he would not be getting the action. And if that happened to him enough, he'd say, you know what? Maybe I need to pick a girl, a single one that I think is worthy of me and date her. And that'll be my girlfriend. And that's all I'm with. See, this is all this craziness is reaction to women's actions in the market. He says, uh, um, although it may, uh, might make it sound like you were both being dishonest, early on in new relationships, is it's a time we naturally want to focus on the similarities and not the differences, right? So in other words, you're going to talk about all the things that are very similar and not things that you dislike. And then when things start getting you know, not so happy, that's when usually she says all the things that she has a problem with you. And all of a sudden you're like, where did this come from? I thought things were going well and she craps all over you. And then guys are like, I... I got nothing, man. Like, she didn't tell me any of this stuff. I haven't changed, but something's gone wrong. And they, they go through a little bit further. I'll leave the link down below, but basically three months. And here's the last article I have, and I'm, I'm just going to read a little bit from this one. Uh, from Evie Magazine, and I like Evie. Evie is kind of conservative women. They do push back against the establishment of feminism and all that. So I have no hate on Evie. They do get some of their articles wrong when it comes to men going, you know, doing their own thing and, and bachelors. But other than that, I think they have women's issues uh, pretty well on point. And this is from Akila Kelia Clarkson. Why can't my relationship make it past three months? And this is from June 8th. So this is literally just a couple days ago. She says a string of short term romances may point to a bigger issue. Yes. The instant gratification generation. <clears throat> She says, it seems like almost everything today is just temporary for a good portion of younger people. Our roommate laden living situation won't last forever. Our current occupation is just a stepping stone to another gig we'd rather have. And even the way we interact with social media is through stories that disappear in a day. We live for a uh, or we live with a for now mentality. The same line of thought often bleeds into our dating life. Even the relationships we enjoy for some reason end up fizzling out by the end of the season, leading us back to square one and absent-mindedly absent swiping through our options on Bumble. As we search for new love, we think that this time it'll be different, only for our new relationship to fall victim to the same fate as the last one just a couple of months later. But why is that? Why do so many of our romances fail to last longer than a measly three months? Before we explore what's going on, let's talk about how romances normally develop. Okay, she's just agreeing with, with what I've been saying. Dating, jobs, social media, everything is changing. Everything is changing. All causes are changing. The minute that you're told, hey, um, you know, there was a, a point in time, if you were to say the, uh, let me let me slow down and put it, I have to be careful with this first word that I'm going to say because YouTube may not like it. Back in the day when someone was mentally slow, they were called R-E-T-A-R-D-E-D. Okay, they were called slow. I'll put the a word up here on the screen. They were called that word. Well, then we were told that is not socially acceptable. Call somebody like that slow. So we started calling them slow. And then we were told by society at large, that is derogatory. Uh, call them uh, mentally handicapped. So we started using that term. And then we're told, no, that is not correct. Um, we need to use the term uh, mentally challenged. So then we started using that word. And and what's next? I don't know. They'll find something else, although there's many other things that they're angry around now. Same thing when it comes to talking about people of a different race. Uh, back in the 60s and beforehand, we would say colored people. That means people with skin, skin pigmentation. After that, it was no, that's wrong. African-American. So Americans, okay. Then we were told, no, that's wrong. It's black 
or Latino. It, it, and it's like, okay, I'll, I'll specifically call out skin color if that's what we're going to do if you want to talk about demographics. And then we were told, no, it's not black or African mash. It's people of color. So we've gone right back to the beginning. We just put one word in front of the other and added an of in there. It's just going in circles. Now, does any of this make a difference to the problems that uh, minorities may have? Does it do anything to fix society? Does it? No, it's just word policing. And that's that's. But why do they do this? Because they want to change the terms of everything. They want to change the way we speak about things. They want to change how the angle that we're going after everything and by always changing things it's because well we can't we've got to make something new we've got to make an announcement we've got a virtue signal we've got to even that doesn't last for long so nothing even our language is changing almost on a monthly or yearly basis and it's impossible if you don't have a a firm grasp if we're not all on the same page when it comes to language equaling ideas it makes it extremely difficult to even have a common thread of communication within our, own, within our own society. This is done on purpose. It's meant so you can virtue signal and shame people and, and call people out and keep throwing hate out there. So even our language is temporary nowadays. So everything is temporary. Keep that in mind because you'll see it. You'll be like, weren't we just like, wasn't this just a thing a little while ago? And before you know it, it'll get changed. That, that's this is why society is just having such the struggles uh, they say relationships develop in stages romantic relationships are like anything capable of living and dying go through stages of development we've all experienced the exhilarating rush of budding romance when everything about this person is uncharted territory every little thing they do is captivating our heart flutters at the mere mention of their name and we simply can't get enough of them we're starry-eyed seeing our new love through the tint of rose-colored glasses that is women women then that is their butterfly or their tingle moment guys are like she's cool to hang out with bedroom's good like that action's good i'm good we don't get the butterflies and Ooh, i'm so excited she called that's not men not at least real men now maybe it's this guy the bra uh bald-headed beard dude in the beginning that was uh mr kakistan uh, maybe that's him maybe he gets all giddy but real men don't um so it's not the men that are getting tired of the infatuation men are getting tired of the bedroom if they're the short-term guys but guys that do want to date a girl they're not like oh the butterflies are gone i'm gonna bounce guys don't do that they only give up if the if the bedroom's dead uh they say the stage in which we're infatuated with our new bow typically lasts around three months long enough to feel like we've invested time and formed a connection with somebody beyond the stage we begin to take note of our boyfriend's flaws and may feel like the magic has started to wear it off wear off right magic is the butterflies relationships that last past this point will experience times of conflict but pr uh, provided the commitment of those involved can continue to flourish with healthy communication and respect right commitment but the guy's already there it's the girls that are not committing anymore they're they're the ones that we catch at on f uh, month number five where you might have just uh, gone out on a great date you, you guys have some bedroom fun you're sleeping you roll over and out of the corner of your eye you see you're swiping on tinder that guys are get, there's videos uh tiktok videos of guys catching their girls or their female roommates with their boyfriend or or maybe it's the the male roommate with his girlfriend but the guy's laying in the girl's lap and and he like her, uh, so his head's down below in her lap and her phone's up here and, and she's swiping on a dating app and the roommate took a video to show the guy that she's swiping while he's in her lap like this is a real big thing now it's the fast food of relationships and here's the thing ultimately who's this great for men it's it's actually not bad for men why because a guy can be like you know what i'm short-term eddie i'm gonna go in there i'm gonna hit it two three months she's gonna get bored of me i know this i'll wait around till she starts looking for another guy and then uh either she'll break up with me i'm okay with that because i'm not emotionally invested or um uh, she'll start ghosting me or or whatever and then i'm single again i didn't even have to break up with a girl so i can hit it and quit it I, but i don't even have to do the quitting she's doing the quitting for me and as a matter of fact a guy can be with a girl for a couple of months and say you know what i really love you i care for you i want to be with you forever and she goes oh freak out i'm breaking up with you and the guy's like yeah i knew that was coming and so now if a guy wants to break up with a girl what he needs to say is i love you and i really care for you and i'd like to you to be my girlfriend and that's when the girl breaks up with a guy not when he says i i, I want to break it off 
Guys, the minute you you if if you're not in a serious relationship, just go real lovey dovey and start talking like long term love. Women will bail out of there faster than ever, and th- ultimately that's probably what you want. So, guys, if you don't get emotionally invested in a woman, right, because it's dangerous because they're gonna flake on you after a few months, just have your fun. As long as the man's mindset is short term, keeping it easy, not getting emotionally involved, not investing too much into this relationship, hey, it's good for me. I'm getting my fix on, I'm having fun time, and then I'm gonna and she's gonna take off. The women think, well, I've I've had this guy, the butterflies are gone, he's not the right one, I'm gonna try another one. And what happens is both end up racking up their body counts. So women get much higher because it's much easier for them to find uh, willing partners. I mean, a woman can walk in and go, hello, my legs are open for business and she's gonna get some action. Guys have to have personality, looks, a sense of humor, a good bank account. Guys have to have a lot more, so it's a lot tougher for guys. So women's body counts go, go through the roof. Guys are like, you know what? You have no value to me anymore. I'm just going to keep it casual. I'm going to stay away from you. Guys are going to be okay. It's the women that are going to be hurt. And here's the funny thing. It's the women that are creating the rules of this dating. The women are their own worst enemies. All right, let's move on to, uh, they, they, uh, before I do that, they say why your relationships are uh, lasting past the honeymoon phase. You're jumping in too quickly. You're, uh, quickly. you're focused on chemistry alone. You're obsessed with the idea of him and not actually him. You could be sabotaging your chances. Um, there's lots of, of reasons. Uh, more warning signs. I'll leave the links down to these down below. But you guys get it. They chase the butterflies. They invest too quickly. They're like, hey, he's cute. He seems really nice. I'll let him sleep with me. Oh, he was a player. Or, oh, I got bored of him because the tingles are gone and everybody's just using everybody. That's welcome to modern dating. All right, let's move on to the dating profiles of the day. All right, this is one that uh, I think I think one of you posted this over on my betterbachelor.locals.com site. I think it was. Um, this girl is very shapely. She's got a very attractive body. Uh, she says uh, she's 26. And the the uh, blur out here says blank liked you. So this is someone, this is a guy who got her as a match. She's physically perfect. But here's the thing. Remember, short-term guys are after great bodies. I don't know what her face looks like. Maybe her face is very pretty too. But... Um, th- th- She's, she's she's now trying to change the rules of engagement to to match what she wants. Listen to the, how crazy this is. The fir, I'm going to read you the first four words and tell me how this doesn't make any sense. She says, I'm a mommy of two. Celibate. Just those four words. I'm a mommy of two and now I'm celibate. Or I'm. it just says celibate. It doesn't say now. It just says celibate. Well, unless you were the immaculate conception slash... Mary, which you are not, I guarantee you. Um, You had to sleep with somebody to get those two kids, but now she's celibate after having her two kids, gents. That's right. She went out. She had her fun. She has her kids. Now, because she had her fun with Chad's, now she wants a man to uh, provide for her before he gets access to her further. She already rode all the rides on the playground. Now she wants the bailout. She says, Jim... You have to understand, I'm very serious about my commitment to God. So if you aren't, uh, if you aren't, so if you aren't, don't waste our time. I'm dating to marry, not dating to mess around. I have two toddlers and run a small business, so please understand, I'm a super busy woman. Yeah. So she she had her amusement park rides and her fun. She's 26, and now she wants to find a provider for her. Here's the thing. She will find a provider. It'll be like this bald dude right here that will be happy to have a, an attractive woman by his side. He will pay for all her ways. He will let her go out and have fun with other guys if she decides to. Because, yes, she's really celibate and into God now. But she wasn't when she created the kids. And I have a feeling that would go away very quick. Maybe not. Maybe she's really found uh, a religion. But more than likely, if she came across the right guy, I think that would change pretty quickly just like the first girl that was talking about dates you are she's used to ending in the bedroom i'm pretty sure this girl would have it that way too but she'll find a guy that will provide for her and marry her and then she'll give it up maybe every other week while she extracts all the resources from him and then she'll bounce on him and now she's single and has money and the kids are teens and you know she'll be 45 and still probably looking pretty good and she'll go back on the market all right and this and the second and last dating profile of the this is a quick one it is a gal that is 
very much pregnant in a little booty shorts and a bra. And uh, she's very pregnant. And she says she's 21 years old, by the way, 21. And it says, where where the stepdaddies that's trying to buy diapers and a little kissy face? Um, No, no. So number one. Any man worth his salt will not date you, will not sleep with you when you're in this state, will not take you out to dinner. They don't want any part of you. You're carrying another dude's kid. And and remember, she was either with Captain Playa, she let him have the bedroom fun before vetting him and making sure he was going to stick around and he was a good man. So that's on her. It's also on him. He could have lied. Uh, he's. I'm not saying that he didn't lie and say, oh, I'm going to love you forever, baby, and then get her in this way. But... She could, have, she could have protected herself with some birth control. So her kind of being in the mommy way, her fault. Um, not only her fault, I'm not saying it's just her, but it's, it is her, her fault. And now she's like, I'm alone, I'm 21, I need help. Who's going to help me buy diapers? No man's going to step in and, and date that. And again, I feel sorry for her. Like, there's no part of me that's like, ha ha, you idiot, and, and this is so funny. I don't find this amusing at all. I find it sad. We got another kid that's going to be raised with only a mother. Let's, I mean, it looks like she's taking it to term. So at least that's a win. She's not, you know, deleting it. But she, it, she, we're going to have another single kid with another very young mother that's probably, I mean, I doubt she's gone through college and is highly educated. So again, it's, it's, this is the problem with society that she's not a probably, she, I have to say probably because I don't know her. She's probably not a good judge of character. She's probably not an upstanding um, positive for society. Maybe she is, but now she's going to be a single mom with a kid whose dad is not in life. That is not a positive in, in any way that that you look at that. She could be a, a, I don't know, a scientist. She could be a millionaire scientist. But that's irrelevant. It's going to be another single kid in the world without a father. This is a problem. This isn't funny. And this is sad. But here we are. Uh, Guys, I'm going to leave it there. Uh, If you'd like to support my work, links are below as always. If you have, thank you very much. Again, the best way you can support me is like, comment, share, subscribe, and join me over on betterbachelor.locals.com. A small cup of coffee donation every month. Um really, really, really helps me. And, And I'm about a third of the way to where I'd like to get a goal. Because that way... You know, it's every couple of days I get a video out to you guys. I want to keep the quality. I want to keep them, and I want to keep them good topics. I don't want to just put out videos uh, so I get views and I get maybe some ad revenue from from YouTube. That's not what this is about. I want to keep good quality content to you. So I don't want to push out stuff that is not interesting or, or doesn't have a, a, a story behind it. By you guys supporting me over at betterbachelor.locals.com, you keep me there because I don't feel like I have to just push out stuff just to to try to get a shiny nickel. So thank you for those of you that are joining me over there. Guys, I'll leave it there. This is Better Bachelor. I'm Joker. Remember, um, the instant gratification throughout society, whether it's work, whether it's dating, whether it's families, what, no matter what it is, is going to shred us apart. It's going to tear us down. There are no values. There are no morals. There is nothing that matters anymore but the now. And that's great for now. But when tomorrow comes, which is inevitable, when the bill comes due tomorrow and we have to pay it, we're in a hell of a lot of trouble because we're not ready to do it. Mm-hmm.